Hi, my name is Laura Sogar, and I would put Christmas in my immigrant jam. <gasps> German. Welcome, everybody. Do you hear the sleigh bells ringing? I do. Dingling a dinging. <laughs> That's a mental illness. Welcome back to Immigrant Jam, the podcast. It's me, your host, Lucy Pohl. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tis the season. It's true. It Tis the season. But more importantly, today is a special day because I have a special guest with me here in the studio. The one, the only, the funniest, the German, the amazing <laughs> Laura Soga. Yay! Thank Laura, you for having thank me. Thank you for being here. Laura has a podcast that you must all check out. It's called Risque Business News. Uh, we're going to find out more about it. But more importantly, Laura, this is the time I get to confess to you that my name is also Laura. <gasps> it's a very German name. Yeah, there we go. Laura's. Yes. Although my Laura. parents, Laura, exactly. Yes. <laughs> my parents say that they went to Italy and they saw this little girl running around and uh, her parents kept going, Laura, Laura. And so they thought that. It, Germans love nice. Italians. Germans love Italians. Love Italians. Obsessed. I saw Andrea Bocelli oh. last night. Did you? Yes. Last night? Yeah, I used to playing at Madison Square Garden. But he didn't see you. Oh. No, because I was from the back. <laughs> I was on the cheap seats. That's He's where blind, I was. Isn't he? And he's blind, yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, he couldn't even have. Okay, anyway. Right, exactly. But uh, my mom freaked out. She was so excited. That's she was so like, oh, Laura, Andrea Bocelli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does your yes, mom mother. have a thick German accent? Uh, I don't think so, but everyone who meets her says that she does. Oh, my God. It's one that's of those. so funny. So you don't think so just because. She's, she speaks like my mother, you right. know? So in my mind, I don't really hear it, but everyone says that, yeah, she absolutely does. Where in does. Germany is she from? Bonn. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Okay. But she's funny. She grew up all over the Middle East. Middle East? Yes. Oh, okay. I was like, which part of Germany is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's us. Awesome. I was like, yeah, East. right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, because her father worked for the embassy. Oh, mm -hmm. so she is already an international kid. Yeah. And then she came here and was like, I'm going to make another. Yes. International kid. Yes, exactly. Me. <laughs> less. She always reminds me I'm less international than she is. <laughs> it's not Does a competition, she speak mom. Arabic? Uh, she did. She, I think she still speaks some of it, but we never ask. Mm. We're never like, hey, mom, bust out the Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, there's like, I mean, Turkish people aren't exactly Arabic, I guess. But mm. in Germ, there's, I think, like almost more Turkish people now in Germany than Germans. Yeah, no, it's a ton of them. Yeah. Um, where did you grow up in the U.S.? I grew up in primarily Rhode Island. That's where I did like all my schooling years. But I yeah. was born actually in Texas and lived briefly down there because mm. my dad lived in Dallas when he met my mom. Oh. Overseas. Wow. Yes. And for your mom, like a guy from Texas was like the most exotic yeah. thing ever. Like, oh, the for quintessentially sure. quintessentially American. Well, get this. They actually met on a flight that she was a flight attendant <gasps> on. I know. What? That is risque. That's right. Hot. That, that is, that's, that's hot. hot. That's like disgusting. every man's dream. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting because it's my parents. <laughs> but you know that was really hot. <laughs> but that's, I mean, I, I, I think that's nice to have um, your parents have like a hot, hot, it's, cute. I guess it's like better than it being extremely boring, but it's almost a little too hot where I'm like safety first, mother. <laughs> like so that's he, not safe. Because <laughs> I never know how to like, I'm like so bad at picking people up. I'm just mm -hmm. learning how to do that now. But like, so how, what's the, do you know the story? The I don't know story? the the intimate details. Thank God. <laughs> but I do know that she was a flight attendant. Um, he was there on business. So he was in business class and she was the business class flight attendant, which is even hotter. They're always nicer. <laughs> The, it, oh. I, no big deal. I've flown business. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, but I have noticed the female flight attendants are much nicer to the men in business class than to the well, women. Well, listen, they're trying to get a ring. I mean, God forbid. She was it's successful. True. This was also back in the day when once you were over 30, um, they were like, you should quit your job. That's being a flight yeah. attendant. Like, she we hate herself. we hate you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. So, um, yeah. So, fucking time was ticking. And wow. yeah. 
And then they she, fell in love in, they the, fell in, love, in the high skies. High skies. <laughs> did a very long distance relationship. Really? Before like texting and all of that. Yeah. Wow. She was she was based in Bonn and he was based in Dallas. Whoa. I mean, he based. He lived in Dallas. He spoke no German. But I feel He's like. a German man. But I feel like men back then were also like more. If they said, all right, I'm in, I'm down, it wasn't yeah. like, but I don't know really how to commit. Like, that was right. like a different time. It was like, okay, like, we're he doing was, this and that's it, you know? A hundred percent. And my dad, like, clearly had no issues with confidence. <laughs> the man was shooting a shot. And he was like, I'm done with that. And I would now like this German woman to <laughs> immigrate here. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Very confident. He was like, I need you to immigrate for my love. <laughs> she did. And did you grow up speaking German? I did. Well, actually, it was funny. Um, when I was younger, my mom was like very, very big on our like German heritage and making it a big thing. And I actually went and spent a summer when I was like four years old or like really young with my grandmother. So I was there for a couple of months, you know, not terribly long, but it's like that period of time when you're learning how to speak, period. Yeah. And they come back over to pick me up because I'd been there over the summer and they were like traveling or something. And I didn't speak English Whoa. anymore. And my dad doesn't speak German. And he was like, Mm, we wow. have a problem, Susanna. <laughs> we have a problem here. <laughs> I cannot speak to my child. Whoa. But then I went back to America and I forgot most of it, except for I do know like what you would say to a four year old. Ah. You know, okay. nine. Big one. Big so one for me. You can say like I I, I poo pooed my panties. Yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. Um you said that you guys like celebrated your German heritage, which is kind of not that common because a lot of Germans after the war were very um, hesitant. And, yes. Like waving a German flag around is not a thing. Right. Until yeah. the World Cup, until they won the World Cup. Nobody was doing that. Yeah. I so think what What were you guys, what were you guys celebrating exactly, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> My what exactly? fiance is Jewish, so <laughs> I'm just going to get out of that. Um, well, uh, I think it was like, I don't know, it was always just eating the, the food. Like, like, okay. There was my every year for Christmas was a big piece. They yes. love Christmas. Christmas is huge in Germany. Huge. It's German Super Bowl. Yes. They are, they they go <laughs> so true. They go so hard. It's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. And like that was when I was like, we are German. First of all, the fact that we celebrate on Christmas Eve. Okay, exotic. Twenty yeah, fourth in the yeah. evening. Yeah. yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I didn't have to get up early. You idiots. <laughs> yeah. I got my gifts the night before because I'm mature. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Um. And did you have the Adventskranz? Yes. And you, um, what is it called? The wreath or whatever? What is we it had, called? Oh, English? we had all the decorations. I remember the craziest one. I don't know if there's actually, I was trying to find this, but I couldn't find a word for it. You know those pyramid things where you put the calendar or the candles in the, the base yes. and you light them? And yes. it's like German engineering. It's like they have to flex German engineering even in yes. Christmas decorations. Yes. Because you light the candles and it goes up to that little like windmill and the, the and then it turns. heat yes. makes it turn. Makes and it's it like turn. Jesus, like the nativity scene, but in a circle and it's yes. flying around. It's all wooden. It's They also love candles. Nativity they love, pyramid. It's, I but think there that's must, what it's called, right? Probably, but there must be some fun German word oh, for it. Oh, the German it. word? I don't know it either. We never had stuff like that, but I, oh. I loved seeing it. My parents weren't into anything remotely religious. But, oh, and enough. also my parents were like, we're too cool for, you know. Oh, yes. Can, they were like unconventional. <laughs> Although we did have a Christmas tree and we did have the open flame candles. Yes, which everywhere. Is insane. And there's so many house fires uh, because, on of course, Christmas because, because of these candles. Erzgeberg. Erzgeberg? Erzgeberg? Yeah. E R Z G E B I R G. So that it's actually on? means Erzgebirge means Erz is a is a region and the Gebirge means mount like mountain range. Mountain of that range, huh? Yeah, maybe it's, so from, maybe there. it's from there. We actually they, lost an entire uh, Ottoman one year. Our house called almost caught on fire because somebody bumped the table. The whole thing fell over. Yeah, because yeah. Mike is also German, or Mike's grandma was German. Yeah, there you go. Um, well, which you love can check out in flame. the episode with Mike. Uh, um, <laughs> love an open yeah, flame, insane. and they love putting them near dry kindling. Yes. specifically the Christmas tree. They put them on the and Christmas tree, and they love tree. a live. They, I mean, we 
adamantly live Christmas tree. And like they I love cannot... a live Jesus beheading. No, <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> um, that's horrible. No, they love the candles. And what we used to do, even though I just said my, my parents are unconventional, but we did do this one thing, which I think is so funny in retrospect. So before we moved here in Hamburg, we had this apartment. There was these big doors to the living room. And so they'd close the doors. The Christmas tree would be in there. My dad would be in the living room pretending he was Santa and being like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> And You're my like... mom and my sister and me would be outside singing Christmas songs. Like, oh, Tannenbaum, yeah. oh, Tannenbaum, big grün sind da. Don't light on fire. <laughs> and then my dad would open the door and go, oh, Santa just flew out of the window. And we'd be like, no. He says hi. Yeah, literally. My dad also would like, like the phone would ring and he'd pick up and he'd be like, Santa? <laughs> And I'd be like, let me talk to him. Let me talk to him. I but think that's it was like, like one of his friends. Not, not even re- like my parents were. Well, they actually went through like a period of like every different religion that they like did a little trial run. Oh. But they weren't like that pushy on it. Yet they still committed so hard to Christmas. We it's had fun s- though. It was so fun. We did, did you do Nikolaus? Yes. I was about to say this is another way you could flex on your classmates who yeah. weren't German. Just be like, oh, you guys don't even have St. Nicholas talk. Yeah. Nikolaus is December the 6th. The shit. The shit. Nikolaus is the best because yes. you wake up in the morning, you put your boot out and yeah. then you wake up in the morning and then if you were naughty, you're supposed to just get um, a branch but nobody yeah. does that. No. And then if you were nice, you get um, Clement Valentines yes. and walnuts and and gifts and presents. chocolate and unless chocolate. your parents are psychotic <laughs> you're gonna get chocolate no oh, okay. of course yeah, yeah. marzipan <laughs> like, marzipan yeah. exactly yes and my and my dad would um uh like put like like dirt on the ground you know yeah be like, oh yeah oh, they the like Nicholas make it a whole came. thing like the yeah. glass was here he the broke Nicholas in we're calling here. the police <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had a breaking yeah. and entering last i night. love nikolaus more than christmas probably i definitely agree though honestly like the gifts were not like that was like a great warm up. That was like an appetizer yeah. into like the Christmas like spirit, which was getting presents uh, from your pre- parents. But um, uh, the spirit of it was great because also no one in class had it, so you could go home, you exactly. could go to school and just be like, "Oh, you guys didn't do that." <laughs> my, oh, sorry. Yeah, my traditions are great. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you eat goose? Because that's very traditional on Christmas. The Germans eat goose, uh, a Christmas goose. The Christmas goose. Uh, we did not do the Christmas goose. No? We did have duck a number of times. Okay, that's um, almost a goose. Yeah, it yeah it feels like isn't it in the in the family. Um, but we would typically do like a like a turkey, and then my dad liked a ham. So uh, we do okay. a ham as well. Okay. So then she kind of like branched out there for that one. Mm. It was great. Cookies? Did you make the cookies? We made the cookies. Yeah. Um, my grandmother would always send us a big box of stuff from Germany. That my was also grandma would too, although she wasn't German, but yeah. she lived in Germany. Oh, okay. And she also would send us cookies. And this was also that that was a big deal, especially when I was growing up. Like back then, like you couldn't or I mean where we lived, there wasn't like a German market you could go like pick up stuff. Like right. now I feel like it's like if they shipped it, I'd be like, why, why'd you spend all that money? Like shipping stuff, I can pick it up But you feel here. like, like in, I feel like in New York, you can find everything. You can find everything else. in New York, but in like where we were in Rhode Island, we would have had to like really schlep. Right. But to now go find you feel stuff. like you could find it there. Oh, you could order it online. You, you mean- could order it online and I think you could get most of it. Mm. But like they would send us all the fancy little like pig marzipans. Yes. Oh my God. There's a bakery, a German bakery in St. Petersburg, Florida, and it's called the Mozart Bakery, which is so <gasps> funny because Mozart was Austrian. Yeah. So it's like so we, funny. We, we, Austria is Germany. Sorry, Austria. Well, We're also, taking it. People always think Hitler is German and Beethoven is Austrian when it's yeah. other. Well, we don't want Hitler. Yeah. Why did we get? <laughs> yeah. Why did we get Hitler? Yeah. Walk Maybe back over. Because they all believed him. Um, um, yeah, Christmas but I'm going is so to, fun. I'm going to Tampa. I'm going to go to Mozart Bakery. Yeah, go. Shout out to Mozart Bakery. It's I'll be good. there. It's yeah, actually I'm good. Gonna, yeah. Shout out sure. to Mozart Bakery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to Tampa. Oh, right, because your parents now live they're there down now. there. Yeah, which is like really. Yeah, it's yeah. in St. Pete. Oh, my God. My mom is going to be thrilled. This is. I'm just daughter of the year it's award. It's been there for like 20 years. I've, I'm They surprised. only recently moved there. Oh, okay. Like a okay. couple of years ago. So we haven't. And like, I don't hang there it's legit I'm they have up. legitimately good stuff like that fish total is really good and yeah they have some good stuff there I can't and wait. The, the woman working there was actually german there you go she yeah. better be 
<laughs> yeah, but you never know. You know what I mean? That's I was, like a culture like that's impressed. fine to appropriate. If yeah, people totally. take German, we're like, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who wants it? that? Yeah. Nobody wants that. Yeah. I always talk about that, like how painful it was to be a German immigrant as a kid here. It's oh, like the least coolest like, nationality. Sh- 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 you American. Yeah. You're American now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. Did you also have um, this nudity issue? Like my parents were nude a lot. My mother was, but I was a little, yeah. <laughs> it's a face. thing. Yeah, they they, they love thing. they love being nude. Um, definitely more for, like, my dad wasn't German, so thank God did right. not do that, because yeah. I feel like that would have been a much different experience for a young girl. But my mom, like, she was like, you know, just shirts off around the house. Right. Like, it's no problem. And you know? um, armpit hair, yes or no? Oh, my God. I actually don't know if she had armpit hair. My mom, hair. massive bush. Really? Um, definitely massive wise. bush. But pubes wise, <laughs> but, I re- <laughs> but I remember being in like fifth grade and sitting in the cafeteria with a bunch of girls and I was telling a story and this wasn't the like climax of the story that my dad was naked, but there, it, this was part of the story. I don't remember what it was. It was like, then my dad walks in yeah. and he was just like naked. And I was like, and then my dad walks in and he was naked <laughs> and everybody was like, ah, ah what the hell? And I was like, what? what HR? <laughs> yes, literally. They were so mortified. Yeah. And then I w- went home that day and I was like, nobody is allowed to be naked here anymore. Yeah, we got to shut it down. That's, they're like, that's not fun. Yeah, little, it's not fun. Exactly. The hell? Prude? <laughs> yeah, Germans have no issue with like nudity. They're very open about some things, but not feelings. Not so feelings. strange. This is what I always it's, say. It's a weird group of people. They can't express their feelings, but then they're gangbanging each other yeah. in leather masks. Yeah. yeah. In their What's basements. up with that? What the hell? And also, I really want this question to be answered okay. by someone out there in the world. Were Germans like fun and cool before World War II? Like, is that what fucked them up? It Were they could like be. open? Because they like... really, they really, as they should have, like took that one. They were very focused on that for a while. I mean, like, we are right. sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, if you say sorry for too long, I feel like you're just not going to be fun anymore, which is good. Again, this is true. for the best. This is true. This no, is true. No, I think there might be something to that. Because I think part of the reason that my mom was more into being German was like they weren't in Germany. Mm. You know, they were in the Middle East where it's a whole fucking different ball right. game down right. there right. she grew up in lebanon and tunisia and then she went to a french boarding school oh. you know so like it's it was a completely different experience than but if she had been you, in germany did you growing up because i think it's interesting with immigrants who like i never knew you had a german mother at all yeah. you know I, like yeah you don't you don't talk about it much on no. stage, do you? No, I have a couple jokes like alluding to being German. Yeah. But nothing really directly on it. I definitely will probably write about it at some point. I've just there's a lot there's a lot of funny stuff out there. <laughs> <But> <laughs> there's a so, lot to tackle. I always think it's like interesting with people where, you know, you don't present as <laughs> an immigrant or well, whatever that means. You you seem super American, obviously. Yeah. I mean you did grow up here. Um, but then you did have this like cross cultural upbringing. Then, On the flip side, so my mom's sister also came to America and has, you know, American children. They are so German. I cannot stress this enough. They are, like, fresh off the boat. Like, they are German Mm. and, like, presenting German. So, like, we're... And we're always kind of, like, fucking relax. I don't know. You you grew up in Connecticut. Like, it's it's fine. Like, yes, you can speak German. That's cool. So did you tell, like, were, but did you tell people? Because you're like, yeah, Nikolaus, nobody else had it. Were you proud of it? Or did you try to hide it? I didn't, like, try to hide it directly, but no one really gave a shit. So I kind of, like, moved along. It's not, like, a fun immigrant story. Right, exactly. Like, it's not... Yeah. Everyone and also people are familiar with German culture. They're like, right. oh, liverwurst and yeah. whatever. It's, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christmas oh, was the worst. one time where I was like, oh, I actually have something interesting to bring, but not just sadness of war stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I always say it's also kind of lame because it's not like it doesn't really make sense because it's kind of a downgrade to come here. Like there's free well, health care over there. My mom was so pissy about that so pissy the whole like growing up she was just like america's low-key sucks like a little <laughs> bit <laughs> and yes. she obviously was like you know kind of joking but i don't know if she really was um but um yeah she was like very complained about it like all the time all the different issues we had which was probably good for me growing up because like i think I, we're 
when did you get here? I was eight when we moved here, and we moved to New York. Okay, city. so you moved to New York, so that's like mm. a little bit different. But I feel like in the rest of America, it was very like America's number one, like right. go USA, like guns right. and like eagles and stuff like that. Totally. And she was like, "You're not. <laughs> America's <laughs> yeah. kind of the worst." <laughs> like, and but, so like I had that in the back of my head growing up. I was very cynical about a lot of things. But that was it. Was never an option for them to move to Germany. Like when they retire or no, something? No, um, just my, my mom was a flight attendant. And as we discussed, they hate old flight attendants mm -hmm. in Germany. They were like, no. They literally paid a massive bonus for you to retire before, I think it was like 32 or something wow. like that. She, like a mat, it was, but this was like a while ago. I, I'm sure now it's completely different, but this was like Lufthansa. I, a lot of the airlines did. I don't think it was just German airlines. Wow. And um, so it was always kind of known that, especially staying with my dad, she would come here where like he was an engineer. So, you know, mm. he had a job that he couldn't do in German. I'll tell you that. Right. <laughs> you know? So it definitely made sense to come how here. How do you think like growing up like that, how do you think it was different for you than the American kids? I mean, I think having that like more, first of all, we traveled there yeah. a good amount. So that helped. Which now in New York, everyone travels, if not everyone, but like a fair amount of people, you know, do travel a fair amount and see other cultures. So they're not, again, America number one, like that yeah. closed minded mindset. Um, so that I think helped me quite a bit. Um, and now and, you were just saying you love to travel so much. I love it. Yeah. And it's the best way to actually understand the different why why things that don't seem to make sense are occurring mm. in other regions like what like not you know, like i understand war like k-pop now <laughs> well seriously we yeah. flew through korea on the way back and like seoul for instance and i was like holy shit they like they are hyper fixated you on like you stopped over yeah oh, so okay. we were in thailand and uh we did a two-night stopover in seoul yeah which is like one of my favorite things to do by the way i definitely had a stopover like just do the 48 hour layover, go check out the city. And yes. they're like, I want to come back. So cool. And we literally landed the first thing we're in the, the terminal, this K-pop star walks by us and she is being chased by paparazzi. And she's so adorable. She's just like, <laughs> like smiling. Like, <laughs> they go like this, don't they? Oh yes. She was like the cutest little girl in the world. And we were like, Oh my God, we're getting in the back of the pictures. We're like, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. We're here. Yes. Um, but point being, I was like, Oh, I kind of not that two days gives you any real appreciation, but a little bit more appreciation than I normally would have right. to like Korean culture, you know, which yeah. I think is really important to you be able to understand important? what's up in the world. Right. So you think it's important for everyone to travel? I mean, obviously resources like I realize that's a massive luxury that I'm very lucky that I'm able to indulge in on occasion. Yeah. So I can't like say, yeah, everyone should travel because we should also have food and healthcare and so many other things that are right. <laughs> maybe higher priority yeah. than a trip to Europe. But if you can, I mean, obviously, you know, don't waste your money on. I think you should spend your money there versus on another indulgence, perhaps. But you were saying you think that um, it's a European thing to love to travel or to travel a they, lot. Well, because they have the time off. They have the time off. They love Also that. the proximity. The other thing is I think here in America, a lot of people like can't, yeah. Imagine leaving because so like, it's so, everything's so far. Yeah, I traveled. I went to Orlando. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. I've seen the world. I've yeah. been to the Epcot Center. Yeah, exactly. I'm so proud of myself that I know this reference, even. That's a, that's a it's deep very American, American of you. That is extremely American. That's Good for only you. because Yeehaw. I was. It's actually Yeehaw. Epcot Center, not the Epcot. Not to be too <laughs> Disney about it, but just, you know. Yeah, you got to drop the. the... <laughs> Okay. I only know that because I had COVID in Orlando and was stuck at the World Marriott Center. That is an American center. experience right there. For you, 10 days. You got stuck at the center, at, at the Epcot Center? No, in the World Marriott, the largest Marriott in the world, overlooking oh Disneyland God. or whatever, Disney World or whatever it is wow, called. Wow, that is called. a true six circle of hell or something like that. That's Absolutely. And and we had this big room, beautiful so happy to be there. I was there for a Comic-Con. 
then got COVID at the Comic Con, then got stuck there. It was overlooking the pool, which like then in the distance, there's a Disneyland and fireworks go off and stuff. But every day from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., they would blast music at this pool. And then they had a laser light show Perfect. every night. Perfect. It was so Good insane. recovery. Good COVID recovery <laughs> it protocols was, it right was there. The Twilight Zone. Yeah, it was that the is American that is, Twilight Zone. That will drive you into a psychosis. Yes. Right there. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's absolutely. Like, yeah. If we were trying to brainwash people yeah. with American culture, I think that's the experience yes, that you exactly. have. It's like Clockwork Orange, yes. you know, yeah. like when they're like, they make Mickey's his here eyes. again. <laughs> <laughs> he can't close his eyes. He has to watch those like snuff <laughs> films or whatever the fuck it is. That's what it was. Oh, my God. It's just Cinderella. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's Cinderella. Um, At the bar with Goofy. Uh, torture porn. Cinderella, the torture porn version. <laughs> It was so Oh, well, I'm bad. sorry that happened to you. No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a better person for it. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, yeah. But uh, the Epcot Center, right. No, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, I used to have this friend and she would always, she was very American. She would say things like, my brother just went to Korea. And I'd be like, how did he like it? And she'd go... He liked it, but you know, it's weird over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, no. uh, Every- and it's like, it, it is, I think it's so funny that the visas here are given to people and then they're considered aliens. Do you know yeah, about this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Alien of course. Of extraordinary My mother ability. was on right. playing the green card game. And yeah. you're an alien, uh-huh. permanent resident alien or whatever. But that's also, I think, how Americans really see. Yeah. Kind of the rest of the world, right? I it's definitely like- agree. And it's it's gotten better, I think. I think especially with social media and stuff like that, everyone has... Mm. You can go... Even if you're not able to go to Korea, for instance, you're mm-hmm. able to look online and see like, oh my God, K-beauty and all this stuff right. and really get more exposure to different cultures. Yeah. Um, but back then... No, you would just read on the paper papers, maybe, but you're like a child. You yeah. might see a television show that would tell you about that. I don't even think there was any Korean... TV shows? No. No. We didn't have Korean TV so, shows. So, so why would you know anything no, about it? No, for sure. Absolutely. So, I mean, But I, then the terminology, that was definitely some like Reagan shit right there. <laughs> who came up with that? Oh, the alien thing? Yeah. Who came yeah. up with that? Who came up with that? Uh, Do you know what Tell I mean? us who came up with that. If you know, I would love to. I would <laughs> like, know, what president threw that, that too. just yeah. pitched that? Everyone's like, you could just use people. I feel who like have- it was before Reagan. I feel like that was probably in the 20s or something or. or Someone problematic for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's um, weird. That's a weird as hell term. What do they use? And do you know what the German like translation would be? For um, people who immigrate? In Germany, do you have it, Mike? You know? Doesn't say who, but in ni- 1798, it was used in the Alien and Sedition Acts. Oh. So it was quite a while ago. So it's so they, not they, they, old. It's, so they just haven't. They've been too fucking lazy to update that shit. Yeah, it feels weird. Yeah, it feels super weird. It feels weird that if aliens came to the Earth, we'd have a visa the process. Same, yeah, we'd have a <laughs> very strict process where they have to learn. <laughs> the pledge of allegiance <laughs> i know some people will call them goddamn immigrants yeah 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 we'd have the same Thanks, we'd switch Mike. in between <laughs> um, i put the that, accent on so you knew who i was talking about right okay. yeah no but it's Texans. funny to think that like literally if aliens would come here they'd be like excuse me do you have a visa <laughs> sir sir hello we'd the also be like tentacles. well that alien was in my class you're like oh the korean one or the one from mars <laughs> yeah exactly well same thing for people here i guess in germany um it's the ausländer behörde which i think is like Outland, ausländer out, outside what is that Aus- Aus- ausländer. outland land is country and out aus other is country out, yeah other out out, country. outlander out country yeah out Lander, I guess, is the Outlander. That's cool. That's like a Jeep. No, it's I feel not like a nice Jeep word. would come. Well, sure, fair enough. But it sounds the, the translation's kind it of fun. It sounds like that because get of that. the hot Scottish men in that fucking TV <laughs> yes, show. Wait, that's that's ex- why you like it. You're like, exactly I like that. Term. I'm like, actually, uh, that's kind of sexy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, it's Outlander? like really offensive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, Auslander is a is a terrible word. Oh, I remember no. my mom being called an Auslander in front of us as kids, and they would oh, go no. Auslander. House. That's like a thing that is like a slogan for oh like gosh. hard right and stuff like that. Really, Ausländer really yeah. interesting. And Ausländer is so it like is so xenophobic because it literally but, means like you're from outside of this country. What's interesting though is like alien feels like it should be a more extreme version of that, but it's what the government calls them. 
Yeah, like but it's, it's so ridiculous, Alien. Yes. That it's almost It's kind of like not just, offensive almost. Exactly. It's not offensive anymore because you're like, Americans are insane. You call the people that weren't born here aliens, you fucking weirdos. Like, is everything Americans a fucking so funny. movie? Americans are insane. So funny. Yeah, like, Americans we are the are reality so television yes. of the world. Yes. The unfounded enthusiasm. <laughs> so excited this, like, about the stupidest culture. shit. I catch so myself weird. when I, so I was, you know, if I go over to Europe or something like that, I sometimes catch myself being American, American, of which of course I am American, yes. but just being like too over. The, and I'm, in, I'm, in, I live in New York. I've lived here for a while, Dude, I get <laughs> so it. I'm tempered down for the rest of the country, yes. and I'm still like, okay, you need to rein it in, Laura. Like yes. it, that yes. much enthusiasm for the breakfast buffet, like fully <laughs> yeah. cool it. <laughs> and I always, it, it's so funny because outside of America, everybody kind of like poo poos it. They're like, Ugh, Americans, no. they're so fake, and they're so. But it's actually so fun when people are like, oh my god, <laughs> this is amazing. Amazing and yeah. awesome. People don't use words in that way in other languages. Right. There are words for amazing and awesome in German, but they it's don't. They don't for get, things that are amazing or awesome, exactly. which is not they don't many get things thrown around. Exactly, they to be get filled used with all sparingly. Yeah, that's huge. To woo to get a German to woo. Wow, you have to like fucking. Meanwhile, we have woo girls. Like that's all I do. What? It's woo. I, oh, woo girls. You, have you heard about the woo girls? No. What's woo girls? Woo girls is just like girls who are always like. Woo! Like the bars, you'll find them. Next time so you're like out of Santa like Con? Santa Con, yes. There's absolutely a huge amount of woo girls at Santa Con. Woo girls. That Where is it's like so your funny. song came on and you're like, yes. I'm woo! calling this episode Woo Girl. Woo Girl. <laughs> I listen. I and I love woo girls. I love that part of America. I love that enthusiasm. It's pretty funny. Because they're fucking high fired up. God forbid. God forbid we have a good time. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Trying to have fun. I love that. Bachelorette parties, that's a that's a lot of woo girls. Even if you aren't a, a woo, woo girl, girls. that's a lot of woo girls. Yeah, and it's having, a lot of screaming. Yes, yeah. a lot of screaming. You don't want to be near woo girls if you're not going to be with the woo girls. Yeah. But if you're with the woo girls, there is nothing more infectious. Yeah, and you, oh. and you have to be in a stretch limo. Yes, oh, right? huge. That's yeah. massive. That's massive, yeah. for sure. Uh, Laura, did you grow up with any funny German sayings or idioms or expressions? Yes, I actually texted my mom about this one because Ooh, I, love that. I remember she was... Um, she said she made this one up, but I love this word. I, let me see. I mean, I think she said. She made it up? That's yeah. That's so cool. Uh, Zeus is fit. Yeah. Zeus fit. Zeus what? Zeus fit. So Zeus like, wut? Wut, yes. Like, um, like sweet anger? Yes. <laughs> I love that. Zeus wut? Zeus wut. So it's so like poetic. You, she, they would use it, her and her sister, for, you know, when you see like a kitten or a puppy and it's so cute that you kind of want to like, ah, you're cute. Is that just... My parents. I love that. That is Zeus. That is so German. That's the thing. In German, you can make up those yes. words. It's like Schadenfreude, right? Yes. The yes. famous word everybody knows that the like uh, happiness you feel at somebody else um, and at somebody yeah. else's misfortune. Yes. Um, Zeuswut is if you want to torture an animal, it's so cute. <laughs> Zeus wut. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, Zeus means sweet. Wut is anger. And you can put words together and make up a new word. Germans hate spaces. They do not <laughs> want the words. That's such mm. a funny, like... One. <laughs> that's such a funny thing to put out there. Hey, everybody listening. Just so you know, Germans hate spaces. The space bar is <laughs> no use in the German language. Get rid of it. We're doing that's one word. Hilarious. And periods. Sentences yeah. go on forever. Forever. Can you read in German and understand everything? No, it depends on what I'm reading. Mm. Like, some basic text I'll be able to go through in context the words that I don't know in. Um, but, like... Not high level. Right. I could do like a New York Post level of German. Okay, got it. <laughs> Not a New York Times. Bild Zeitung. That's the Bild Zeitung in Germany. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I would else? crush that. Süßfut is your favorite that one? Was, that was my definitely my favorite one. Okay, um, I love that. We didn't have any other major idioms. Again, my dad did not speak German. So right. it's kind of like, cool it. Right. Cool right, it. Right. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, in that case, it means that we are now... At the very witching time of night, where we oh. must play the poll questionnaire. Okay, Are what's you the ready poll questionnaire? It? Yes. Laura Soger of Rhode Island, by way of Bonn, by way of Lufthansa Love. Yes, sponsored by. Sponsored by Gives the Lufthansa wings. Romance. Are you ready to play the poll questionnaire? Ja oder nein? Ja. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Zoga, if you were president of the United States of America, what American food would you ban? Ban. Ban. Oh my goodness. 
I love American food. This is a problem. What? I have trash taste. Really? Yes. What's your favorite? Wings. Wings. Fuck, they're good. Wow. Sorry, am I allowed to swear? Of I mean, it, it just you must. It swear. deserves that level of enthusiasm. Yeah. Okay. And then, like my third favorite's like nachos. What's the second? Chips and salsa. <laughs> I love that you <laughs> a went variation. To the third. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chips and salsa doesn't feel. American, but like it definitely is. It totally is. It definitely Isn't is. It? I think well, it is. because you think of it as like Mexican food, quote unquote, but it's Tex Mex, which is American. Right, right. right. So are you saying as I don't the know. first guest on this podcast I don't know that you I would ban any. no American food? Is that what you are saying right now? I don't um I can't think of any that I, I what about like Twinkies? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. We'll get rid of Twinkies. That's insane. Okay. That is literally insane. They, are they don't insane. rot. What's going on there? <laughs> You've seen that, right? They uh, don't go bad. I've not they don't seen go that, but I'm not surprised. No, they literally been have been in the ha- deli since 1987. Yeah, every Twinkie ever made was made in it 1987. Also, yes, it looks all like it's from 1987, yeah. the packaging. Yes, they sold all of them and that's it. I think you're right. <laughs> I don't even think that's a conspiracy theory. I think that's no, it's, true. It's true. You can quote me on that. Put it I on mean, the news. who still orders Twinkies? I don't know. Because somebody has but to put it in But they showed up in lunches. Like, they were being served in American. My mom was very big, and she was like, American food is uh, what they're serving. Ca- oh, Lunchables. That is what I would ban. Lunchables, but that was my American dream when we moved here. But you're right, that was insane. I wasn't allowed to have it, but I saw it and I was like, it was, it was like, like very the sky like sky lit up. Yeah, they're rich. That it like represented credit card debt for me growing up. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was like what what a waste of money. That's so waste funny. of money. Really? So much packaging. It's just packaging. Three Ritz crackers. Like, what are we doing? I just thought it was amazing. Like the little compartments. I'd never seen anything like, a like bento it. Bento box. Yes, and I begged my mom, and it was a hard no. It was a hard. It no. was a hard no. You did not get any of that. My you got mom liver gave me seeds. sandwich. You got liverwurst sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Gross. Gross. You don't like hate, liverwurst. Hate. I'll be honest. Can I say something spicy? Yeah. I hate German food. German food is not good. It's really bad. I don't think that's a spicy thing to say. It's really bad. I think oh, we're here like trying to, you know, represent the culture and stuff like that. No, no that part, skip it. No, fuck them. Yeah. They have terrible food. <laughs> what Disgusting. the fuck? Cabbage? Ew. Gross. Yeah. Get out of here. Sauerkraut. They, what Sauerkraut. Is, what is wrong Nasty. with you? Disgusting. It's bad. It yeah. went bad. Throw pork. it away. Everything's pork. Yeah. The only good thing that Germany has is bread and pastries. The bread and pastries. But like, I, I don't eat a ton of those anymore. Oh. I'm a 32 year old woman. What, what well, am I supposed to do I mean, with multiple days of bread and pastries? Uh, I personally would eat them. And yeah. I am also a 30 <laughs> You are tiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you were an athlete. Yes. We didn't talk about that, but it is true. You have to look Laura up. Because, German swimmer. Yeah. Yikes. Uh a pretty intense. <laughs> yeah. But don't you have to eat carbs as an athlete? Oh, yeah. Back then, I mean, I ate whatever. Okay. You know, or like yeah. not whatever, but like. For sure. You have to carb load. Carbo don't you, load. Don't you eat like copious amounts of pasta before you swim People, the next day? That's kind of like a little bit of a misconception, oh, but okay. um, you can certainly do that, but mm. there's no specific need to mm. do that. You need the normal amount of pasta. You need to eat. You need to have good nutritious food. Right. But yeah, absolutely. So for context, I used to swim um, professionally. Actually, I swam in college, swam post on the United States national team, almost. No big deal. Swam for the German national team. Crazy. Because I was like, easier to make the Olympics for Germany. Wow. The yeah. Olympics. I was like emailing with them and stuff like that. So we had it. It was. Is that how you get in? Um, you just email them? Fuck it. I'm well, I have. Them. I had a German. I had German <laughs> citizen. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> you could go. Yeah. Can I swim with you guys? But no, I was able to go and like, or they were, we were talking about like, oh, like you would qualify for Germany for sure. So you, if you want to go and like get yourself on the team, you would have to do X, Y, and Z meet to like mm. meet the criteria. Right. And then I was like, yeah, go USA. And then I didn't make it. Hilarious. <gasps> <laughs> I should have gone for Germany. No, now you're a comedian. It's much better. And now it's way less funny to be an Olympian. Exactly. It really is. <laughs> um, okay. I know what you're trying to do here. I see the strategy, but uh, you're not going to distract me from these hard hitting <laughs> questions, Laura. Uh, if you could deport one American person, who would you deport? So one would say Donald Trump, but like, where yeah. would I send him? Good, you know what I mean? Do point. I really want to be the person who put that on the rest of the world? Good point. Good point. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Also, he's the funniest guy we have. The you, funniest? Have you watched some of his shit? I mean, the, and the man's a comedic genius. <laughs> Yeah, the command is a comedian. Don't say that. He is. No. He is. It's oh, why he's doing no. so well. We got it. We need someone to be funnier than him. 
And Biden's not going to do it. I'm oh, you mean sorry. a candidate to be funnier yes. than him? Yes, 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 yes. George Santos was pretty funny. Well, that's what I'm... Uh, he mm. might be the sneaker that we need. Like, <laughs> But he's Republican, too. I oh, know. I guess that's what well, we he's want, like, though. Is he, though? He lies is about he? everything. He's not anything. We have no idea. Yeah, he's probably a fish. He's a loose cannon. Yeah. yeah he's not American. He's an alien. <laughs> he's a serpent. Um, okay, but yeah, okay. So sending Donald Trump to another country, I think, would probably be ill-advised because they'd be like, what the hell? Right. <laughs> Get him out. Yeah. So no one? You'd deport no one? Um, who would be second? I don't know. Who would you who would you deport? I mean, you could say your landlord, for example. No, they're right. I would probably um deport Mike Johnson. Okay. The Speaker of the House. Oh, what a huge. fucking psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of politicians who kind of all Yeah, let's just stick with Trump. I think okay. Let's get him out of here. All right. You know what okay. I mean? If you could put one face, uh, could add one face to Mount Rushmore, whose face Taylor would you Swift. add? Nice. Okay. When, what are we doing? Put her up there. We <laughs> give it. Also, gonna be up like there. it would have her own mountain <laughs> right next to it. Yeah, exactly. It would increase tourism so much. That's true. The Swifties would be all over that. Where is Mount Rushmore again? It's. I thought I was gonna say like North Dakota <laughs> or South Dakota or something like that. Wyoming. Not a spot it's not that's Wyoming. like. I don't think it's Wyoming. Montana? I think maybe Montana. We're bad Americans. Are you not? Yeah. I'm a, I, I, I'm a, I've only been a citizen for two years. Yeah. Well, it's that's not, not on the quiz. <laughs> that's no. not on that little quiz I gave it's you. That should be. South Dakota. South, South Dakota. Dakota. What a tourism boost yeah. for South Dakota. Yeah. Desperately needed. Taylor Swift up there. Right. People will be there. Yeah. For sure. And people would know about South Dakota in the first place. They would. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Okay. All right. I'll Okay. If you had to come up with a catchphrase for the United States of America, what would it be? Mm, catchphrase, probably some Taylor Swift lyric. I think that I think she represents the best of us right now. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I love that. Yeah, that's just great. That she's a woo girl for sure. She's a woo girl, huh? Yeah. So maybe like, the catchphrase is just woo girls. Woo. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yes, that is the catchphrase. Yes, I love we'll go it. with that. Okay, two more questions. If you could add one amendment to the U.S. Constitution, what would you add? No more stupid shit. That that's the catchphrase. That's the, the amendment. Amendment to the Constitution. Yeah. Well, all this stuff that this just cool it. Yeah, that's actually the cool it. <laughs> all of this fucking relax. No okay. more. I love that. No more chasing young Texan ladies around the country because they're trying to get an abortion. Cool okay, it. I didn't know where you fucking were going with that, cool but I like it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. see that? Yes. We don't I have did. to get I into did. that. I it's did. a very yeah. not fun story. But officially cool it. I yeah. think that that would uh, cover. Yes. <laughs> yes. That kind yes. of a situation. Yes. Guns. Cool it. Cool it. Absolutely. People not having health care. Cool it. Cool et cetera. it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Cool it. I love it. I love it. Applies to a lot of different things. And it's also flexible. And you want that because we're creative. We're going to come up with some other bullshit that needs cool it. Exactly. Okay. Last question. Most important question of the day. Laura Soger, do you know how I can meet David Hasselhoff? Huh. Where does he live right now? Malibu, I think. Well, that's step one. We can go to Malibu. Okay. So we'll fly there together. And then does he work? He definitely works out. He works we need out. to find his gym. That's oh, how you can find I love him. That. Yeah. That's good. German no spy. one's ever said that. German spy. Mm, German spy. You gotta spy. infiltrate his family and friends. I love that. See if you can figure out what his favorite kind of workout is. Ideally, it's some sort of fighting bullshit mm -hmm. because they are very specific, mm -hmm. you know, and like specific training times and stuff like that. I like That's how it. you would do that. I love that. All right, Laura. Well, thank you for solving that problem yeah, for me. Yeah, there's an answer for you. That, Laura, that, the Germans would figure that out. That's true. That is very Here's German an actual of you. strategy. Go for it. Laura, where can people find you online? Um, all over the place. Um, I perform all over the city, so come see me live. But online, you can find me at, at Laura Sogar, just my name. Uh, it's sugar with an O. Mm. Cute. Yeah, love it. And then um, I have my podcast <laughs> that's weekly. It's just we shit talk the news. It's really fun. It's awesome. extremely unserious um, at Risque Business News with um, my co-host, May Planner. So we have a great time. I love that. So Check out everything Laura does. Listen to the podcast. Follow her. Look her up. Send her pictures of your Christmas tree on fire. Yes. No, don't set it on fire. Don't do that. Just send her a picture of your Christmas tree. Frohe Weihnachten. As we say in Deutschland, um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, happy everything. Happy, happy, happiness, happy atheists. Day. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Uh, thank you so much to Mike Albanese. Yay, Mike. The 
Hi. producer of the year. Thank you to Laura Sogar for being here Thanks so for much. Thank you, thank me. you, thank you. This was so fun. Um, and that's it. Amazing. Go celebrate something. Goodbye. Woo.